How's it going everyone, it's me, Vivi, and welcome to another Crash Bandicoot video. Let's talk about Coco Bandicoot, why not? What really do we know about Coco? Well, she's Crash's younger sister, Vivi. Look, Crash Bandicoot is basically Mario and Sonic in terms of background lore. We don't wonder who's really who, who's related to who, you know, backstory. But hey, is there anything wrong with theorizing, folks? You know, having fun? Come on, why not? Crash Bandicoot, as a whole, has never been narratively driven, and we know that. These games were always focused on gameplay, and fun, cute-looking characters. Coco Bandicoot was always called the sister. The very first instance of this type of information wall, it comes from the US manual of Crash 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Coco Bandicoot. Coco is the spirited young sister of Crash and is highly intelligent. When her face isn't glued to a computer screen, she's trying to get Crash's relaxed life more organized. Count on Coco to hack into Cortex's plans to warn Crash with some important information. The young sister of Crash. The teen sister going by a reply to a question regarding her age. Charles Zembalis, original character artist at Naughty Dog, had left a reply to this question. Okay, so she is the young sister, right? She appeared in Crash 2, but where was she in Crash 1? And why did she suddenly appear in Crash 2? The second question, well, it's funny. Well, yeah, Vivi. What about it? She was introduced in Crash 2, and that's it. Well, I'm asking this one because the answer is obvious. Censorship, for the lack of a better word? Tana was described as Crash's love interest, right? You might think parents from back in the day thought that she didn't really look, uh, Appropriate for kids, you know, it's a kid's game. Well, about that, there's two versions of this censorship story. The first one being the real one, confirmed as of 2017. For the misinformed version, according to Charles Zembalis? Well, here's what he thought. Coco was created as a counterbalance to Tana, who was Bandicoot's girlfriend. She came along because Naughty Dog was sensitive to Sony Japan and wanted to please them. Sony Japan didn't feel comfortable with a super sexy character with Crash, so Naughty Dog went with a sister character instead to appease them. Part of it is true, how Coco basically replaced Tana, but the reality of the situation is Universal was behind the decision, really. According to Jason Rubin, former co-president and co-founder at Naughty Dog, while as a reply to censored gaming regarding the validity of the information on Wiki, here's what he said. Hey Jason, is this true about Crash Bandicoot's uh, Tana? This is from the Crash uh, Wiki page. Yes, mostly true. Universal's head of marketing looked at a character that fit in Roger Rabbit's PG world and saw something rated X. Great to get confirmation from the man himself. It seems Sony Japan also played a part according to Charles's blog. Sony did not have an issue with Tana. Universal caused us to modify her design, and we didn't like the end result. Naughty Dog decision. With that being said, what about in terms of in-universe lore? Apart from the logical, realistic approach they want to replace Tana and all that, could there be a reason if we go with the story of Crash's universe? Where was she in Crash 1? She's a bandicoot, species native to East Coast Australia. Well, if we go back uh, to the classic planet Earth from CTR, it does look like Australia, but looking at nitro-fueled, nitrous oxide heads towards America, suddenly. Let's just stick to the classic one. The point is, Coco must have undergone Cortex and Brio's experiments as well. How else can we explain the fact that she thinks like a human and talks like a human with a high IQ? Here's what Wrath of Cortex had to say about that. Even if you hate the game, let's just go over the information. Coco, Crash's little sister, was also snatched from the jungle and genetically enhanced by Cortex. She is a super smart computer expert with a love of Hong Kong martial art movies and one heck of a scooter rider. She's always there to back her big bro up and not afraid to mix it up herself. Despite of what you think of the canonicity of Wrath of Cortex, this information sounds like the most logical one. We can believe Coco originates from the Wompa Islands, while Ensanity Island more specifically. Wompa Islands is composed of multiple islands, clearly shows us that Crash and Coco inhabit a small home. It's also possible this home exists due to Coco's new knowledge, you know, after her coming into contact with the Cortex Vortex and the Evolve Array. Oh, since I'm mentioning these two creations, the Evolve Array was made by Embryo, and the Cortex Vortex is basically Cortex's invention. Coco must have been subject to that at a certain point. Whatever screen or images she was exposed to, that's basically how the Cortex Vortex works, 
Well, you know, naturally, Cortex was trying to turn Coco into a slave. Well, it turned out uh, she just uh, was a failure. You know, someone who's way too kind with a caring little soul. Cortex saw that as not good, so she just uh, got disregarded. All animals in the Crash universe, going to this old concept art from Project Wombat, an old Crash Bandicoot Bible, well, everyone was just a simple looking animal before they were in contact with Brio and Cortex's inventions. The Evolve Array completely changes their figure, turning them anthropomorphic, basically. One exception to this, Tana walks in. She already looked humanish, as if she was about to talk and say something. It's as if she was already put through the Evolve Array. I mean, that's what it looks like, right? So I take it that's what happens first. Turn them into a more, you know, humanish looking animal, and then try and turn them into slaves. The Cortex Vortex serves as a mind device, basically. It worked differently on everyone in the Cortex Commandos, all the villains, the bad guys we face in the series. So the question is, was Coco created and kidnapped before Crash was put to the failed experiment? Or was she kidnapped at some point during Crash 1? I'd like to believe the second story. If Coco was turned into the Coco we know, then surely she would have tried looking for her brother in Crash 1. Blood-related siblings assuming. Fun fact, there's a quote from Tag Team Racing, where she does mention her mother. Ouch! I'm telling mom! If we had one. So we can believe these two came from the same mother. Do you feel like that sounds far-fetched? I feel like Coco was brought to the table after Tana also escaped. I'll get more into that one very soon. Brio and Cortex must have set their eyes on Coco eventually. You know, Crash was a failure, so let's try someone else. Vivi, what about all of the other creatures locked in those cells? What if Coco was already in there? If she was, Crash, using his brotherly instincts, would have tried and saved Coco. So I take it he escaped because he thought Coco was still at home, and it's possible. But a time comes before Crash faces Cortex that Coco also gets kidnapped. Coco gets kidnapped, she's deemed a failure, she turned out way too smart, way too kind, she managed to escape. And now with her new human instincts, she tried looking for her brother. Luckily, Crash defeats Cortex and that's when they basically get reunited. That's the scenario I'd like to imagine. Like, imagine, by the time Coco tries and look for Crash, Crash defeats Cortex and they just find themselves later on. Do you feel like it's uh, far-fetched? So back to the point where I said Tana escaped and Coco as well, you know, the timing being close to one another? Well, going through the Bible of Crash Bandicoot, Tana tried allying herself with Embryo. Here's the exact quote from it. More than a simple damsel in distress, Tana spends her time matching wits with N. Cortex, attempting to reason with Embryo, and fomenting revolution among Cortex's henchmen. Tana is a force to be reckoned with. So where can we fit Coco in all this? Embryo, despite his inner annoyance with Cortex, always seemed to blame himself for Cortex's failures. Eventually a time comes where Embryo plots against Cortex because he's literally fed up. In Crash 2, he wants Crash to collect enough gems to get rid of Cortex's bigger Cortex Vortex. So Tana trying to ally with Embryo, is it too crazy to think that whenever Coco was brought in to be turned into a slave, Embryo sabotaged it? I mean, out of all of the creatures, Coco turned out to be the smartest and kindest. Instead of a slave for Cortex, they create an even smarter ally for Crash, let's say. Well, not for the smart part. The part Embryo could have sabotaged is the whole mind control thing. Someone who would not work for Cortex. As for her turning into the smart ally for Crash, even if she's his sister, that was unintentional. Crash was just lucky to get Coco in that sort of fashion. The same applies for the trophy girls. They also came from somewhere, right? They all fell into the failed department, but used as trophy girls. But hey, in Nitro Field, they're all brought back. I'd love to see like a cutscene or something with these characters in the future. As for other things, well, fun fact. Crash Bash's Japanese epilogue, which comes with extra character scenarios, while well, we got a rough translation by user Pawn Shop Hero. It states that Coco would love to become a net idol, you know, an internet sensation. She's in Isabella's outfit when she imagines herself older. Now look, Crash Bash's canonicity is questionable, of course. But hey, it's a cool thing to point out. Finally, the thing I said before, 
Crash being gameplay focused and, you know, story not really playing an important role, I'd like to actually keep that as a separate topic for another video. What do you think? So back to what I was saying. Vicarious Visions, you know, with Insane Trilogy, went ahead and came up with an actual narrative reason as to why they included her in all three games. Producer Kara Massey was interviewed by IGN and basically had this to say. Time travel solves everything. So we have the save load screen. She's hacking in with her pink laptop. And you see shots of the first two games appear. There is a similar interaction point in all three hubs of all three games. And Coco will be able to transport herself between games via these hubs. In which players can hot swap between Crash and Coco. The time travel thing is a theory I've read a lot. Or should I say it's... Uh, Pretty obvious, but hey, they wanted to include Coco from the very beginning, animation-wise and everything. They didn't want Coco to be a simple reskin of Crash, alright? So with that being said, folks, hopefully you liked this video talking about Coco a bit. Now about the part where I discussed Crash trying to look for his sister, it can be a bit tricky, perhaps a bit hard to grasp, knowing exactly when everything happened. But it's still interesting to discuss a bit of Coco's background, despite the logical, realistic approach of her being replaced by Tana, for, you know, obvious reasons. So with that being said, folks, this is it for the video. As usual, your stuff, comments, questions, your own theories. Leave whatever you want, alright? Thanks for the support, I've been Vivi, and thank you so much for watching.